and how to reset. So I'm glad you can all hear me now. Okay, so we're going to be talking about superfoods, what I was saying, we're going to be talking about some of superfoods. Let me know in the chat which ones do you think we're going to be chatting about today. Do you have any ideas about any of these foods that we're going to be talking about? So what a superfood is, is it just means that it's a food that has many nutrients in it, many vitamins, many minerals, it's really good for you, it's good for your health. Um, so there's different types of superfoods that have come out over the years. They kind of change them up every year. Some of them stay the same, some of them will come back. But the ones I'm going to be looking at now are the ones for like 2022 that are currently trending. So I think these foods are actually pretty good. A lot of them that they mentioned are pretty good. I'm looking at a couple different resources that I'll show you through and we'll talk about this. So let's start with real simple. Yeah, let's start with this one. So avocado, pomegranates, yeah, those are some good ones. So yeah, pomegranates is one of the ones that I showed today on the thumbnails. So pomegranates are great, avocado are also great too. Okay, let's get started with this. So... Just gonna share my screen with you. So let's go with this. Okay, we got some more guesses about acai berries and kale. Those are good guesses. So let's start with this. So let's talk. This is um, just one source, but I was looking at a couple of them. So the first one is called, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's called mankai. And I've never heard of this one until looking this one up today, and it's a small vegetable. Um, apparently it's packed with lots of nutrition, it's got protein, so it's got a lot of um, amino acids, vitamin B, iron, 60 nutrients in it. Um, so it's pretty interesting. So it looks like, here, we'll look it up. Um, Has anybody heard of this? Mankai. It's this little super green. Let me know if you've heard of it. It's a really, really small vegetable. I've never heard of this one. Kind of looks like a little, um, it's also known as duckweed. Oh, I have heard of duckweed. Yeah, this little thing. Anybody heard of this or are you familiar with it? So it's supposed to have a lot of um, vegetable, a lot of nutrients and a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. You can add it into your smoothie, pasta, guacamole, um, also good for soup. You can add it in soup. Interesting. So what are your thoughts on that one? Most people haven't heard about it. Yeah, I haven't heard about it either. Okay. So that's that one. I mean, it seems pretty good. It seems like it has quite a bit of... Um, nutrients in it. It's really small. Uh, let's see what the taste is like. If we can look it up. Okay. 
neutral taste like romaine lettuce. Interesting. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's a neutral taste that you can put in any recipe. It's got a lot of vitamins, minerals like we were talking about, and amino acids, which is really good. It's got nine times as much iron as kale. So lots of vitamins and minerals packed in this little thing. Um, this is something I'd be interested in trying. I've never tried this or really heard about it before, looking it up. So yeah, it, it tastes like some people think it's really neutral. So interesting. What are your thoughts on this one? Would you guys try this? Where can I buy it? Does Longos have it? Let's see where we can buy it. Looks like some grocery stores. You can probably get it in um, some like organic stores. Organic stores have it. You can buy it online. You can buy it in powder. So if you want to get it in a powder form, you can buy it online, which would be um, easy to get um, into your like smoothies and things like that if you want to buy it in powder form. Interesting. Cool. Okay, all right, let's see what else. Number two on this list was turmeric. So are you all familiar with turmeric? Turmeric. So this is turmeric or turmeric if you've never heard of it or seen it. So it's got that really orangey yellow color. Um, it's really good for reducing inflammation, helpful for healing your gut as well. So any gut inflammation, it's good for supporting your liver. So it's got a lot of nutrients that help support your liver to detoxify, to protect the liver and liver cells as well. So your liver goes through a lot of damage and just does a, a lot of stuff like by anytime you take medication or anytime it has to work, it's does a lot of work and then that can put a lot of strain on the liver so turmeric is really good for that um in terms of its taste um it's got like an earthier taste it's like it looks similar to like ginger does but it's not spicy like ginger is or that um, pungent flavor you can have it uh, in a powder um so you can make like um a turmeric latte drink so you can put like hot milk with turmeric it's really nice and some honey um, you can take it in pill form, you can cook with it, so you can cook it with soups and stews, um, vegetables. Turmeric is great. It's got a lot of good benefits in it. What else do they say here? Like what's it good for? You can see it's good for heart health, Alzheimer's, cancer, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, depression, arthritis. So really good one. Does anybody cook with turmeric or use turmeric often I would say like actually I haven't recently but the thing I used to like to do was cook it with um and like soups and stews I would love cooking with turmeric I find that it just adds a nice flavor to it what are your thoughts on turmeric whole foods yeah yeah you can buy it at whole foods uh, yes, it's good for inflammation. Nice. So a lot of you have heard about turmeric, so that's good. Yeah, turmeric is great for helping with inflammation. and Good. Okay. So that's that one. Let's move on to the next. So this list, next one that they say... second this page is just loading okay so the next one 
is tahini. So is anybody familiar with tahini or have you used tahini? Um, are you familiar with what it is? So tahini is grounded up sesame seeds in like a, a paste. It's more of like, um, it's not as thick as hummus it is. Hummus is, it's more liquidier. Like um, it kind of looks like when you get like a, a smooth peanut butter, um, the natural kind. That's what tahini looks like. So tahini is made with like lemon, garlic. Sometimes they'll put lemon and garlic in it. Sometimes you can just get it plain. And this one's really good because it's got those healthy fats in it. So those sun sesame seeds have a lot of healthy fats in them. So that's great for your brain health, for helping to improve your memory, to improve your energy levels. Um, what else do they say here? It's also got lots of uh, fiber and iron and calcium, which is great in minerals too. So I'll show you what tahini looks like. This can be used um, in a dressing. So you can make, hey, I just saw tahini turmeric dressing. So there you go. You combine both of them together and you can have a superfood dressing. So you can do like um, in a dressing, I like putting it with olive oil, uh, salt and pepper, some lemon juice. It's really nice. So that's kind of what tahini looks like. You can make your own. Um, you can buy it from the store. What else can you use it in? You can make um, dips. You can mix it in dips. You can have it as like a thickener in certain um, recipes. You can even use it in baking. Like I've seen it being used in baking before. What are your thoughts on tahini? I use it in soup. Okay, that's probably the turmeric. Nice. I've heard of it. I've, heard, I've tried tahini. It's good. Yeah, tahini is pretty good. So this one I would say it's a good one to try um, because of, it's probably something you don't need often is sesame seeds and they do have quite a bit of calcium and iron and benefits so that's good for your bones, for your heart health. Um, so I would say try, try some tahini, have it in a dressing, it's really nice. Okay, the next one is number four is pomegranate seeds. So pomegranate seeds, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with like its benefits for heart health. It's kind of talked about a lot how pomegranates are good for heart health and they are. And they also have a lot of antioxidants properties, which just means it can help protect your body against stress, against damage. So they're really packed with a lot of antioxidants and same thing as like blueberries. A lot of berries have antioxidants in them. So pomegranate is really good for that. It's got a lot of vitamins in it. So you got vitamin C as well, which is helpful for the immune system. So let's look at pomegranate. Um, any thoughts on how to eat pomegranate other than just like on its own? Does anybody have any tips? Let's look at pomegranate recipes. I feel like, okay, so salad is an, a way I've seen it before. You have pomegranate on salads, so like fresh pomegranate. I spelled it wrong. Um, what else? Juice. Anybody have any other? Never used it. I heard they are good for you. Yeah, but what are your thoughts on how to eat pomegranate okay so this is like having it in dessert nice honestly i feel like you can have it in juice i feel like you could just have it in um a salad or just on its own it's it's good but the thing i hate about pomegranate is cutting it open and getting those little seeds out like it is so hard to do it i i i every time i do it i make a mess and it looks like a murder scene in my kitchen with the red juice everywhere um apparently like if you put it upside down under water and then you hit it with a spoon i don't know i tried it it didn't work for me anybody have any tips or how or do you just go and buy the one that's already like um, peeled and seeded, de-seeded. It's really tough. I, I find it really tough to do it. 
Um, is it okay to just juice the pomegranate? Yeah, you can juice it, definitely. Smoothie? Yep, salad, yep. I'd say those are the most common ways, smoothie, salad, juice. Oh, you can eat it on its own with like yogurt and granola, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, I, I usually buy it whole and then I try my best to peel it. It does help having it under water too, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Number five, this one I really wanted to share with you. Number five is Moringa. And I feel like a lot of people haven't heard about Moringa. It is a powder um, and it looks similar to matcha. So I'll show you it. It's like a leaf, like, like similar to matcha. Looks like matcha because it's green too. More, I can't. What is going on? Moringa. So this is what it, oh, I guess it's also known as drumstick tree. Um, so this is what it is, it's this powder. It's really helpful for supporting your energy, just giving you a lot of vitamins and minerals. So doesn't have caffeine in it. So like matcha does have caffeine, um, moringa doesn't. So you can add it as a powder to your smoothies, would probably be the best way of having it. Um, and that way you're gonna get in a lot of the vitamins and nutrients that you have it. You can even like make, I guess, um, some sort of drink with the powder if you're able to get one that has other things in it. Cause I think on its own, it's kind of, um, earthy like grass tasting that's what it kind of tastes like grass <laughs> like wheat grass or something like that so as you can see what does it do it has a lot of vitamin c tons of potassium so seven times more vitamin c than oranges 15 times more potassium than bananas got calcium protein iron amino acids help your body heal and build muscles antioxidants that protect your cells from damage and boost your immune system so it's really important um superfood i would say this one's good to try try it out see how you feel what else have we got about it yeah it's, it is helpful for energy but i'm curious anybody tried this one what are your thoughts on moringa i just peel it i have not heard of moringa never heard of moringa isn't that a dance Moringa dance? Isn't it a dance? Moringa dance. Mereng merengue? I don't know how to pronounce that. Merengue. Sounds similar. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Similar. Spelt different. Yeah. So you can buy this in powder. Um, and yeah, have it in a drink, have it in a smoothie. What happens when you drink it every day? You can have reductions in blood sugar and cholesterol and antioxidant anti-inflammatory effects. Yeah, so it's a good, moringa is great. So maybe try it out if that's interest to you. Okay, let's keep going. Let's move on to Number six, number six are cranberries. Um, okay, yeah, interesting. So with cranberries, just be careful. So if you're buying like the cranberry um, juice, you want to buy one that's pure cranberry, pure cranberry, um, rather than the one that has like added sugars and other things added in it. That is because like the sugars really are just going to be increasing sugar and blood sugar in your body so you don't need that so you want to get the cranberry juice and that one is actually really tart uh, as opposed to the other one that's made with sugar and stuff so cranberry can be very helpful for the bladder so it's great for bladder health um so that's a good one it's also got a lot of vitamin c and similar to most berries that we talk about it's got like antioxidants too 
Um, honestly, like, cranberry isn't something that I go and eat. Like, I don't go and eat cranberries and buy them from the store. Um, I feel like it's more popular to be made into, like, a jam or something like that. But I would say, like, if you want to have the juice, I would say get, like, the tart juice and that can help get you some vitamins and minerals that way. Benefits, yeah, it can prevent urinary tract infection, prevent cavities, reduce inflammation, improve your heart health. Okay. This one's okay, yeah, this one's not bad. Thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? Be I just had some cranberries in my salad. Nice. That's interesting. Okay, so cranberries in salad. Beware of cranberry cocktails. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we're talking about because those um, things, they add extra sugar in them. Cranberry is good for yeast infection. Yeah, so it's good for bladder health too. Okay, what's next? Number seven is fermented foods. My favorite. You guys know so much about these because I've talked about them so much. So we just talked about kimchi and sauerkraut and Greek yogurt, um, fermented vegetables. So kimchi is fermented cabbage with some seasoning in it, but you can just even just do fermented cabbage, fermented pickles. Or I guess that's technically fermented cucumber. <laughs> um, so these are great for your gut health, for the probiotics. So big trend is gut health, talking about probiotics, improving your gut microbiome, and you're going to do this by adding these foods. So yes, yes, definitely add some into your diet, whether that be yogurt, whether it be through some of these things like kimchi, sauerkraut, very important. So that's important for your gut health and your overall immune health as well. So I would say definitely get some of this in your diet if you can. What's everybody's favorite probi probiotic food or fermented? Oh, we're talking about fermented and then I started talking about probiotics. Um, yeah, I know it's a bit different, but that's okay. Similar thing. You don't like fermented vegetables, okay. I eat Greek yogurt, I don't eat kimchi. Yeah, it's okay, not everybody eats it, but even if you can just like make your own pickled vegetable, you're still it's still helpful. All right, what's next? Number eight is cruciferous vegetables. So some of you guessed kale, so that's great. So let's look it up, cruciferous vegetables. So these are things like arugula, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens. We talked about kale. Um, so what else? Bok choy, yeah, Brussels sprouts, yeah, 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 greens. So these have a lot of vitamins in them as well and they also have a lot of fiber. So fiber is great for helping move things along your digestive tract for helping regulate your bowel movements so you can detoxify everything out of your system and you can just feel better so fiber is great for that and these green veggies have that as well they also have some um, compounds that are which are just basically like parts of them that are important for helping detoxify estrogen as well so that's a great a thing so it has two things it has like a couple of things that help with doing that so that's really helpful um, for just helping your hormone regulation and getting things moving along your digestive tract what's everybody's favorite cruciferous vegetable I really like kale I actually just made a kale salad tonight for dinner um, I don't know, I just like the way it tastes the best. I find it's versatile too, like I'll put it in a smoothie, I'll have it as a salad, I'll saute it, I, yeah, I like kale. Greek yogurt is okay, fermented grapes are good, yeah, wine. <laughs> My salad had kale in it also, nice, it sounded like you had a superfood salad, that's great. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, kale's a good one. What else did they say about it? Oh yeah, got a lot of vitamin K, which is helpful for supporting your vitamin D as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go on to the next one, number nine. So number nine is ancient grains. So what are they considering ancient grains? This includes amaranth, teff, quinoa, farro, among others. They're nutrient dense and rich in phytochemicals that combat chronic disease. Earth friendly. Amaranth, quinoa, and farro are just a few ancient grains that you can find at your local supermarket. Okay. So let's look up. I've had actually teff, um, teff flour tortillas. They were pretty good. It just tasted like a tortilla, just a little bit um, drier than a normal flour tortilla. Okay, so teff is a little grain. It's like the size of a poppy seed. Oh, cool. So these are good um, sources of fiber as well, like we're talking about with the um, greens. But these ones are also, some of them are good alternatives to things like your typical things like wheat and rice. If you want to add some of these, they have a bit more nutrients in them, and then they also give you a variety of things. And then if you're sensitive to gluten and you can't really have wheat, you can try something like this. It won't be as irritating to your gut or as inflammatory if you can't have something like gluten or if you're eating too much of it. So these are good options, these super grains. Questions about that? Quinoa is the only one I've heard of. I uh, like quinoa. Okay, nice. Quinoa is probably one of the more popular ones, so maybe you can try out one of these other trending superfoods like teff or um, what was the other one it said? Amaranth. I've never tried amaranth. Amaranth. Not amaranth. Uh, It's like a, oh, it looks like quinoa too. It looks like quinoa. Very small. Is it poisonous to humans? <laughs> Avoid eating too much amaranth from agricultural fields. The leaves, like those of spinach, contain oxalic acid, which can be poisonous to livestock or to humans with kidney issues. Okay, so no, they're not poisonous. Cool. That's that one. All right, let's move on to number 10. And number 10 is hemp seeds. I love hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are great. They got so many healthy fats in them. So that's good for your brain health, your skin health because of those omega-3s. They got protein in them. So hemp seeds, um, also known as hemp hearts, they got, I, I, I can't remember, let me see protein, because it's pretty good. I think in like a couple of tablespoons it's got protein. How many is this? Here. So three tablespoons have 9.5 grams of protein. So that's really good. So I love having these um, many different ways. I like having them on top of avocado toast. I like having them with um, granola and yogurt. I like putting them in smoothies, having them on top of salads, making baking things with them. They're very versatile and you can have them with many other things. Um, what else do they say here? Yeah, pretty much those, it's got those omega-3s that are good for your heart, brain, and your immune system. Yeah. So, what does everybody think about those? Let me know what your thoughts are. Are hemp seeds and hemp hearts the same thing? Yeah, hemp seeds and hemp hearts are the same thing. I like hemp seeds, hemp hearts on top of my peanut 
and banana toast. Nice. Yeah, so they're both the same thing. So out of all of those, which ones do you think you'd want to try? Um, I think the Moringa is one that I think would be really good to try out and see how you feel with that. Um, it's got a lot of, it's a powder, so it's easy to have, and it's got a lot of um, vitamins and minerals in it. And like I was saying, um, it's caffeine free, so it's good for supporting your energy, but doesn't have caffeine in it. So that's something like, I, I haven't had that in a long time, so maybe something that I wanna try. Mm, what else was there? Um, I think another one having the um, pomegranate s'more. I like having pomegranate, so like having a pomegranate kale salad. You get a lot of um, superfoods in that if you have something like that. So that'd be a good way of getting that in. And then maybe having some of the ancient grains, so like switching up things, switching up some of the typical grains that you have if you're commonly having gluten you commonly have um, pasta or rice maybe trying some of the ancient grains and seeing how you like them just it gives you a variety um, in your meals I like the berries and the pomegranate nice yeah uh, berries and pomegranate are great lots of antioxidants good for your heart health um, good for supporting your immune system as well I'd say probably the most challenging one for me to incorporate is the fermented foods and I think we've talked about this before but I find it's challenging to incorporate those fermented foods um yeah quinoa is good I'm going to buy pomegranate this weekend nice okay well let me know if you have any other questions if there's anything else that you want me to talk about um before we wrap things up Yeah, say that adding in, oh, some other things that I, some other places I looked at, what else? Kale was a common one, blueberries was another common one. So yeah, I'd say berries and those greens are pretty common to be considered superfoods and they are great. They got lots of nutrients in them and fiber as well. So any of those cruciferous greens, like if you want to even consider having like one of those a day, you get a lot of benefits of getting vitamin C, vitamin K, um, supporting your immune system, supporting fiber to help your digestive system. They're all great. All right. I'll let you guys ask me any other questions for the next minute or so. Um, if not, I hope you guys enjoyed this session and found some of the things helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. You can always join me again next week. We're going to talk about different health topics. Um, and if you have any suggestions or anything you want me to talk about, feel free to share them. But I think that's it for tonight. And I'll see you all next week. We'll, we'll talk about something else. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Go buy some superfoods. Enjoy them. Try them out and let me know if you felt a difference because they really should help with your energy. If you are trying to incorporate a couple of these or even one of these every day into your meals. Okay, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.